Good afternoon and welcome to the April Ordinary Council meeting. Item two, acknowledgement. We, Greater Shepparton City, <coughs> acknowledge the Yorta Yorta peoples of the land which now comprises Greater Shepparton. We pay our respect to their tribal elders. We celebrate their continuing culture and we acknowledge the memory of their ancestors. <coughs> Item three, privacy notice. This public meeting is being streamed live via our Facebook page and made available for public access on our website along with the official minutes of this meeting. All care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as a visitor in the public gallery, it is assumed that your consent is given in the event that your image is broadcast to the public. It is also assumed that your consent is given to the use and disclosure of any information that you share at the meeting, including personal or sensitive information, to any person who accesses those recordings or minutes. Item four, governance principles. Council considers that the recommendations contained in this agenda gives effect to the overarching governance principles stated in section 9.2 of the Local <coughs> Government Act 2020. These principles are as followed, and they are listed one to nine on page six of the agenda. Item five, apologies, Councillors, do we have any apologies? Yes, Councillor. I'd like to note that Councillor James is an apology and note that also that's why we're not having a welcome to country today. Very good, thank you. Can I have someone second that? Councillor Latson, all in favour? Carried. Item six, declarations of conflict of interest. Councillors, do we have any conflicts this afternoon? No. Very good. Item seven, confirmation of minutes of previous meeting. Councillors, there is a recommendation. But before I get to that, are there any minutes opposed from the previous meetings? No, can I please have someone move that? I to move the motion that the minutes of the 21st of March 2023 council meeting and 11th of April 2023 additional council meeting as circulated be confirmed. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Can I please have someone second that? I'll second that. Thank you. Councillor Favour? <coughs> Carried. Public question time, nil received. Item 9, deputations and petitions, nil received. Councillors, we now go to page eight of the agenda, item 10.1, which is the Talambran District Community Plan. There is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sully. I'll move that the council receive and note the Talambran District Community Plan 2023 to 2027 as attached. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have someone second that motion? I'll second. Well, right. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Ms. Sali. First and foremost, I'd like to congratulate the Talamba community on their very detailed and meticulous plan. At first, I thought Council must have paid for a consultant because it's such a high quality document. However, I'm told it's all done in house, which is very impressive. I'd also like to congratulate Talamba for their strong consultation with community groups and the work they've achieved so far. I note that the report has a very long list of achievements and even includes the community beehive, which I've not seen in any other council plan. Talamba is a shining example of what can be achieved in genuine collaboration with council. Rather than us imposing what we'd like to see, these plans allow the community to shape their own unique identities, set them apart from other small towns. So again, congratulations, and I look forward to seeing a Talamba men's shed community garden, community pizza oven, more teen activities in future years, all that, and that's only to name a few. So they've got some high ambitions and I wish them well. Very good, thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, thank you. Quickly, I would uh, endorse Councillor Summer's uh, comments that uh, you know this plan is so detailed and it's meticulous and it, it's, high, it's a high quality plan. And um, basically, I just want to uh, congratulate and also to acknowledge that the plan that they have developed, it actually represents, of course, it represents all the priorities and all the achievements. It includes everything. But the thing that stands out is that it reflects the, the, the Tulamba community's sense of pride in, the, in their town. And that sense of pride is just so heartening to see. And, um, and of course, as we have seen from the details, that it was a very um, engaging community consultation process, and they've gone through so many um, sort of interactions and engagements with uh, other community groups. It just represents that the community is uh, really invested in making sure that their town stands up in every respect. So well done, and congratulations to the Tulamba community um, planning group. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. 
Uh, thank you very much, Mayor Sali. Uh, the Talamba community is really an in, such an empowered community. They're inclusive and their plan that they put together is about their community. It's interesting that their vision really is about putting each community member given a portfolio to lead. So they've all been given different areas uh, within the, the, the region to, to actually lead. And this encourages not only ownership, but passion for them as well. The, the plan that they put together, um, as Councillor Summer alluded to, is, is very systematic, is logical, and is an inclusive approach, the way that they go about it. Um, they highlight their achievements, their desired outcomes, and their potential partnerships as well. But the thing that I really like about it is that they categorise categorize their future and into these particular areas of community spaces, whole of life, accessibility, connections, education, services, and natural and existing assets. Well done to Lamba. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Hey, Councillor Summer, any closing comments? No, thank you, Ms. Ali. Councillors will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. We now go to page 18 of the agenda, item 11.1, .1, which is March 2023 monthly financial report. There is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the council receive and note the March 2023 monthly financial report as attached. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have someone second that motion? Dobson. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, a couple of highlights that has been noted in the in the report talks about the October 2022 flood event, and there's no doubt that uh, uh, some of not only of our assets but uh, some of our institutions have taken a fair whack. As has the whole of the community. Really, we're all in this together, um, and so um, the the figures to date sort of show that. But I think underlying all that that we're still sort of coming out of the COVID. 19 situation that uh, not, none of our services are back to full strength because of you know difficult to find uh, uh, employ, um, uh, employees etc but nonetheless we're here and now and we have an accounting surplus projected for the full year of 13 million however uh, if we take away our capital grants which are non-recurrent uh, our con contributed assets and one or two other things Really, our operating deficit at the end of the year is projected to be about 19 million, which, whilst it's better than what was projected at the start of the year, 21 and a half million, it is still uh, it is still worth noting that we've got to be very cautious. And I think coming into the new financial year, as we will, I think not only has uh, our community um, have got to be very cautious in their spending. I think the council. I think uh, uh, acting uh, for the ratepayers and using ratepayers' money have got to be very careful as well. But a couple of uh, good things, it's not all doom and gloom. For example, the, uh, the operating, the adjusted underly underlying surplus at the moment is uh, round about forecast. Our uh, financial health, the current assets as a percentage of current liabilities currently uh, uh, works out to be 171%. However, that will come down as, uh, as the rates uh, income uh, 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 completes. The adopted budget was around 124%, which is terrific. That is current assets versus current liabilities. Loans and borrowings, which is the more important one as far as I'm concerned, is the percentage of rates. Uh, the year-to-date year actually is uh, 22%. Uh, the target band that uh, we'd like to work in is between uh, 20 and 60%. So we're well within the target band. The adopted budget is 21.23%, uh, so the actuals are pretty well close to the mark as well. Our asset renewals, uh, we're just bordering on at the moment, uh, 100, 101.717%. Uh, the forecast, uh, the adopted forecasting uh, 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 the budget was 142%. Uh, we won't quite get there because um, uh, the flood events, et cetera, et cetera. So all in all, um, a result that's, that, that's perhaps satisfying, but I think what we've got to do is look towards the future now, as Councillor Adem would say, it's only a figure, it's, it's only figures in a space of time. I think we've got to be very careful, and when the budget comes up for discussion later on, I think that's going to be the more important document that we'll look at today. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Latson, would you like to speak to the motion? <laughs> good. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? 
Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councilor Thank Council. you, Mayor Sally. Uh, I was going to say a couple of words, but Councillor Dobson just took my saying away. Sorry. But I just I won't reiterate exactly what Councillor Dobson said. I think you covered it pretty well. Um, it's generally heading in the right direction, and that's what I think is important. Um, so we've we've got to be cautious moving forward as a council that our expenditure uh, doesn't blow out from these numbers here. So, um, yep, we're on track moving forward. Um, I'm confident within a year or two or three years we'll be back to a surplus, a real surplus, not just a moment in time type surplus. And um, But again, that's all dependent on what we do moving forward in regard to expenditure that's not required. Very good. Councillor Adam, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Dobson, closing comments? Uh, no, thank you, Mr. Very good. Now go to the vote. All those in favour? Carried and opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 22 of the agenda, item 11.2, which is the 2022-2023 forecast review. There is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillors, anyone? Mover. Councillor Latson. I'd like to move the recommendation that the council receive and note the revised forecast identified in the 2022-2023 quarter three forecast review as attached. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I second. Councillor Latson, would you like to speak to the motion? I thank you, Ms. Ali. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Councillor Abdullah, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, just briefly, this is a regular process where we review uh, quarterly, uh, the, um, there's a quarterly forecast review and that again is a, is a detailed process whereby, uh, you know, every team, lead, team manager sits down and, uh, and reviews uh, how the budget is tracking and what are the projections. So um, the, the detail, um, the report is quite detailed and uh, some of the highlights are in terms of our revenue, it shows that the, the so the quarter three forecast review projects that our total revenue um, is going to be a decrease um, on the quarter two forecast, and this variance is mostly due to the reduced capital funding due to the deferral of the plan um, night and how intersection, and also the strategic cycling corridor projects. Our expenditure is showing uh, in this quarter three forecast review, it shows it is showing that the um, operating expenditure of $157.02 million, uh, which is an increase from the quarter two forecast. So our expenditures are showing uh, an increase in this, rev rev in this uh, review. And the variance is again um, in our previous report. It has been talked about uh, the basic. Basically, the variance is due to the October uh, 2022 flood event. Our underlying operating results um, is still a deficit, which is still, which is again concerning. But it is showing a slight improvement um, uh, from the from the adopted budget but uh, there has been a decrease in comparison to our quarter two uh, forecast. And that also is mainly due to, um, due to, due to the October 2022 flood event. So um, yeah, the, detail, the report is quite detailed and all the forecast review just um, is telling us what, what's next, what's going to happen to the uh, financial year. And uh, we'll keep on monitoring the the, the financials. Thanks. Very good, Councillor Abdullah. Thank you. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, very quickly, this is really a matter of two steps forward and one step back. That's how I see these forecasts working. Uh, as Councillor Abdullah pointed out, uh, we had a $2.5 million improvement on the deficit for the last quarter review. Now it's gone up slightly to 19 Point one instead of, uh, what was it, 21.6. So, as I say, two steps forward, one step back, but eventually we're, we're getting there. Very good. Thanks, Councillor Adam. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? No. Closing comments, Councillor Latson? I think you met Ali. Thank you. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on close. Councillors, we now go to page 27 of the agenda, item 11.3, which is the 2023-2024 draft budget. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Ms. Ali. I move that the Council 1 endorse the 2023-2024 draft budget, <clears throat> excuse me, as presented for the purpose of Section 94 of the Local Government Act 2020 as attached. 
authorise the Chief Executive Officer to give public notice on the preparation of the 23-24 uh, draft budget and stipulate that persons may <coughs> make a written submission that must be received by no later than 5pm on Thursday the 18th of May and, uh, 2023 and hold an additional council meeting at a date to be determined to hear any person wishing to be heard in support of their written submission or any proposal contained in the 2023-2024 draft budget. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have a Councillor second that motion, please? Second the motion, Ms Alley. Um, Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor Sally, and I'd like to congratulate our, our management team on presenting in great detail uh, how they propose the draft budget for the next financial year. Um, we had a lot of information given to us, so congratulations. I'd also like to congratulate the councillors who uh, late at night or well, late in the afternoon uh, uh, went over the proposals and uh, in a pretty good way, we were able to uh, consolidate where we all stood on the budget and it was a great exercise. So I'd just like to, uh, to uh, say to the councillors, congratulations on your interaction. A couple of points to note is that the first year we came into office, we said there was a zero rate rise. Second year we came in and we said there's a zero rate rise. Third year we've, we've come in and we've looked at the expenses and we're saying, there's going to be a 3.5% recommended rate rise. Now that means that over three years, um, we've had an average of 1.75 rate rise or 3.5% total over the three years. Many of the councils around, the 79 councils around Victoria, in fact, have done rate rises over the last three years of about 7%. So when you look at us in comparison to the balance of the Victorian community, I think we've done pretty well and I congratulate everybody about that. Uh, a couple of things that we've had to take into consideration and when we came into office a couple of years ago we did say that COVID would be uh, still with us and whilst it's not with us in a big sense it is still there and it's still having effects on the community and we can't forget that. The second part that came into it of course was the floods back in October and we've made mention of the floods on many occasions but I can't underscore it too much the effect of the floods and the and the cost to the community and the cost to the council, which is a cost to the ratepayers at the end of the day, and we're still making that up. I've also looked at a, a number of other costs, for example, the cost of increased um, increased uh, power costs over at, uh, at, at uh, uh, Aquamoves and other areas like that, the cost of roads, putting that uh, roads back together, and so what we're finding is a big increase in those sorts of costs. Um, a couple of uh, smaller issues, and I'm pleased to announce to the Marupna community, for example, that there, whilst it's not shown in here, that buried within the deep tales is that there's $200,000 being put aside for the design review of the Lenny Street Marupna drains. Now, we all went across and saw the devastation at uh, Marupna there back in October and the angst that was caused to the residents. And we determined then we'd do something about it. And as a council, we have. Not only that, but we've put also a capital amount to, uh, aside for the purchase of a large portable pump that could go anywhere, but uh, Lenny Street would be an area. So can I say to the people in Marupna, if this budget is approved, uh, it means that council just hasn't given lip service to those people who want it. As I said, uh, a rate increase of 3.5%, that's what the state government has put as, as their, their uh, target and uh, uh, we've had a very good look at it. Uh, we've had various discussions around less than that, but we thought that 3.5% was equitable and now we'll hand over to the community um, for their consideration. Uh, the draft budget also has some rating differentials. For example, the general rate is, we'll call that 100% straight across the board. Farms are a bit less at 90%, so their valuations or their rating process is about 90% less. Commercial industrial, of course, carries the bulk of it, 205%, and derelict at 360%. Now, we know that there's been some discussions about this rate, and I guess that might, might be open for, for, for debate later on. The more important issue here for our ratepayers is the draft budget is presented for council to endorse for public review by the 21st of April 2023 to 18th of May 23. Now this is a chance the councillors have had their go. 
uh, the management have uh, put it all together for us now. We're handing it over to the public, for the public to say yes, we agree, or no, we don't. And if you don't agree on some aspects, we want to know about it. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, just to note, this is a draft budget, obviously, and as Councillor Dobson uh, said so graciously and eloquently, that going out to public, no doubt, We'll get some responses, as we always do. And on the number of 3.5%, and that was greatly debated by councillors, as we all know, uh, toing and froing for many days and weeks. Um, remembering that that 3.5% has been applied to the 2021 budget numbers, not last year, because it was zero, obviously, for two years. So compounded, it's not as bad or as high as it may look to someone. It's a bit of a shock, I suppose, from a zero to 3.5, but if you take into account this is a number that's off the 2021 budget. It's not as uh, bad as it looks. However, if we don't increase our uh, the rate, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to deliver the services that we prioritise in our budget. Remembering that a budget, any budget, is, is simply a statement of financial priorities. So that's what we're trying to get into sync by doing this. Hopefully, we'll get some good feedback from the community and um, recalibrate if we have to. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally. I think it's been beautifully summed up by Councillor Dobson. Well done. Um, this really is being put out, as he said, to the, to the public for consultation, and we re really do require the feedback before this can be adopted, particularly after the flood event of last year, which is still and will continue uh, to have an impact on our bottom line all the way through. Additionally, with the inflation, and inflation is running at about 8% at the moment, uh, we've got um, insurances, we've got building costs massively increasing all the time. Um, I see this particular draft budget as being very fiscally responsible. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Uh, yeah. Councillor Summer. Uh, thank you. Well, look, as stated, we've had zero rate rises for two consecutive years. Uh, and I personally don't think I've seen enough heavy lifting from our organisation to buffer those zero rate rises. Um, <coughs> instead of tightening our belts, we now have a hefty operating deficit of almost 20 million. So to me, it seems like Council is on a path and incapable of sustainably reducing by restructuring and using less. So instead, to claw back to that status quo that's in our long-term financial plan, this budget presents councillors with the largest rate rise option under the cap and uh, many cuts to the community. And this is during a time when people are struggling financially and need some form of hope moving forward. Um, we are reducing support for largely established events and many community grants. Uh, the only saving grants that I see is Marupna will still receive full financial support for this year's New Year's Eve celebration, and I'm grateful for that. Now I'm going to harp on about the municipal charge because um, I can. So uh, what that's most telling for me in this budget is the retaining of the municipal charge. Um, this is the first meeting where I can confidently say every single councillor around this table understands what the municipal charge does, but it hasn't made any difference. It's um, not a charge that adds to our revenue. Its only tangible function is to reduce the rates on high valued properties by skimming off the lower valued properties. We know we can take away the municipal charge because only about half of local councils apply it. We can do this by bringing forward a review of our long-term financial plan. Personally, I believe the pace of change coupled with the incongruence between financial targets and the councillor decisions should force an early review regardless of the municipal charge. And perhaps then we'd gain a shared vision and wouldn't be bickering over cuts to community. There was a lot of talk about the value of our local economy during waste contract discussions, but somehow, in the context of the municipal charge, that point is moot. You won't find wealthy landowners or media tycoons pushing against it because the municipal charge will impact their own bottom line. So instead of putting millions of municipal charge revenue back into the pockets of people who will likely spend it locally, that money largely gets swallowed up by wealthy industries and large corporations who most likely have offshore accounts. 
And I argue if we genuinely believe removing an artificial rate reduction means higher valued properties will pay too much, then our rates are simply too high. I'm just asking everyone to pay their fair share. And I also take issues with the proposed borrowings of 2 million. The attached report, which is available to the public, is not transparent. It reads like we're borrowing for the sake of borrowing just because we can. It might look good on paper and comfortable with the outlook, but I'm not comfortable endorsing any borrowings in an uncertain financial environment that we have at the moment. You need some clarification on that. Or are you oh, no, no, I'm talking about what's presented in the report. It mentions no line items of where that's going, just that it's fiscally responsible. So if you can have, I can read it yeah, out. I'm aware of that, but obviously the transparency aspect. Well, the report itself is not transparent in that it does do, should we keep going? Yeah, no, okay. Okay. I'm sure, I'm sure that somewhere, and I have had email correspondence that have indicated parts of where that might be going, but it's certainly not comprehensive. And in the report itself, it doesn't mention anywhere, so. Okay, no problem. Okay, yeah. So in short, again, I'm objecting to a proposed budget, which I seem to do every year. But um, all I can do is implore the community to please get behind the consultation process. Please have your say. Now is the time if you want tip tickets, if you don't want a municipal charge, collectively let it be known. And I hope one day I can raise my hand in support of a draft budget, but today is not that day. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I think um, this, I mean, this is, this is the big document we do every year. I think it needs to be noted that every aspect of the budget each year is completely up for debate, and we do debate robustly. We all come to very different um, conclusions of what we would like to see in it, and essentially what is left um, on the table to be put out for consultation is the compromise between the nine different individuals who sit around the table. Um, certainly not all aspects that I advocated for make it in. Uh, my thoughts on the municipal charge, my thoughts against the um, derelict uh, rating um, differential, my thoughts on how much we should be spending on active transport and various other community aspects. That's me personally as one of nine sitting around the table um, doing what I can to advocate and then seeing what the document ends up being. Ultimately, if you're watching this and listening to the debate and thinking I agree with that person, I agree with that person, I encourage you to consider running for council in another 18 months because ultimately the decisions that end up being made are because of the people sitting around this table. And if you think that it is too one way or too another way, it means there's not enough of your values around this table. Um, so now this is the compromise of what the nine of us have come up with for another year going out to the community. Um, and as has been mentioned by my fellow councillors, we deeply implore you to um, have your say, to let us know what you think of this document. And I genuinely heartfelt mean, consider running for council. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Well, just very quickly, it's always good speaking at the end, so I can uh, echo the very positive comments that have already been made by my fellow councillors and obviously highlight that uh, this budget, although it is something that we do every year, uh, has been for, you know, to be a bit more challenging under the, the trying circumstances that we all faced last year with the flood event, the ongoing issues that, that is still uh, causing our executive leadership, but to, uh, as a group of councillors, to be able to sit around today and and put what I think is a really fair and balanced budget in front of the community is what we're hoping to do. We've got a month now ahead of us, the, <coughs> the community, and we really encourage that, and that's already been mentioned by my fellow councillors as well. But, I mean, the reality is we, we feel that the budget that's in front of us now, which consists of, you know, a $50 million-plus capital program, it also consists of the ability for us to do what we do best, which is our events as well. So we did have an option to... You know, as always, when you want to claw back expenses, it's easy to cut everything. But as a group, we've worked to be able to accommodate what we feel is the best outcome for our community to put on the table for your consideration. We want to hear from you. We've got a month to get that feedback. And no doubt there could be some changes. But if not, uh, please tell us what you think. And uh, hopefully post uh, the June endorsement, uh, we can get on with things and, and get things back on track. So if there's nothing else, uh, closing comments. Closing comments. I'd just like to take issue with uh, Councillor Summers' uh, suggestion that uh, 
the rich, uh, the rich are going to um, uh, benefit greatly out of this. They pay more than anybody else, for example. Uh, they pay 205% of the rating differential. So because those who have got big properties, expensive properties and, and corporate and big corporations, they, their, their rate increase is much heftier than what would mine be or yours be. So I, I make that point. The other point I'd make is this. If we didn't have successful businesses in this area, in this municipality, we wouldn't have a municipality. Um, I believe that this, uh, this draft budget caters for everybody as much as, you can, as we can. As you said, Mayor Sali, that uh, we've got, we, we still retained a lot of our events, our signature things that we did. It all went out for debate, but let's not be too heavy on the people who do a lot of heavy lifting. And I might just add this, that the people who, who's, who are making good money in this municipality are also giving back and giving back in droves. Shepparton in particular is known for the amount of people and the amount of money that's given to charities and what have you. So I, uh, I, I just ask people to take that into consideration. I'm very happy to endorse the budget. Thank you, Councillor Dobbs. For clarification, I was only talking about them, how the municipal charge works. It's no, you weren't. not an attack yeah. on the wealthy, and I take offence at that. It's OK. Thanks for your point of clarification. We'll move on. Councillors, we'll now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors, we now go to page 34, <coughs> item 11.4, contracts awarded under delegation March 2023. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you, Mayor Sully. I'll move that the council, one, note the contracts awarded under delegation pursuant to a formal tender process for the reporting period, and two, note the request for tender advertised but not yet awarded. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I'll second the motion, Mayor Sally. So, someone, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, yes, thank you. I'll just note that this section seems to be getting leaner and leaner ever since councillors voted to increase delegation to one million for the CEO, who in turn raised delegations to five hundred thousand for each director shortly after that. So, logic would suggest this would result in an increase of reported delegations, but today we're presented with just two items, which I have never seen. So without a formal resolution at this stage, I implore the organisation to maintain Council's values of integrity and accountability by ensuring... Point of order, Mayor Sally. Councillor Dobson, what's your point of order? Uh, Councillor Summer is bringing to question uh, the Council's ethics. Okay. Councillor, Councillor Summer, on, just wait. What we'll do is, Councillor Summer, I'm going to ask the CEO for clarification on this. Peter, are you able to give some direction as to perhaps why we aren't seeing a long list or any reason? It's just outside. the nature of where we are in delivery of our program at the moment. Uh, the delegation, change in delegation, uh, has nothing to do with this report. Mm -hmm. um, we still report on anything, any contract that we uh, uh, award under delegation. There's nothing has changed in that regard. Just because the delegation limit has changed doesn't mean that we're not going to report it. And that, was the imp that was implied in that comment, okay? Mm. So that needs to be corrected. We're reporting like no other council reports in relation to the contracts. I, I don't know of too many other councils that actually do this monthly reporting of delegated contracts. So anything we do, it's out there for the public to see. Councillor Sami, will you accept that response and retract your comments or? Well, yes. Um, if the CEO is assuring us that all of them, even though it's not required in this section, are included in this section and he's doing that publicly, then that is more than enough assurance for me. And I hope that that continues. So, uh, interestingly, a change to the scope for the transfer station upgrades has resulted in a large expenditure of 278000 34 um, point three four. This demonstrates that the ebb and flow of unsurety when dealing with large projects um, is apparent and that council is strong enough to weather these financial storms. It's exceedingly disappointing though to read that we'll no longer proceed with detailed design for the Murchison Rec Reserve or landscaping McLennan Street Marupna. If there were ever worthy projects to get behind, I believe these are 
yet. And I'm not privy yet to what the alternative arrangements will be, but I don't like having to perform U-turns after communicating to the community that things are in the pipeline. And that actually does lead on to the next item, but I'm sure we'll get more detail on why and how those projects are not proceeding at a future date. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, I thought I did want to speak to the motion, Mayor Sally. So I may have changed my mind, but I won't. Look, uh, Councillor Summer indicated that I'm not getting uh, notified of contracts no, under five hundred thousand dollars. Well, this one is two hundred and seventy-eight thousand. I think that's under five hundred, and there it is in front of my face. So there we go. Um, yes. Point of order. That's not what I no, said. That's exactly what you said. Yeah. No. But anyway, that's okay. That's my interpretation of what you said. I oh may be God. incorrect. Um, so there's uh, two two items here. Obviously, it's the uh, Shepparton Mana Resource Recovery Centre upgrade. Um, it's a valid uh, project. I support that. And the other one is a request for tenders advertised but not yet awarded for the provision of internal audit services. So we'll wait to, to see what the result of that is. And I support the motion. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Spinks. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I just want to make it absolutely clear for those who are watching, um, but I don't actually read the agenda, um, that for the detailed design of Murchison Rec Reserve Pavilion that is no longer proceeding as all submissions received exceeded the allocated budget, but council officers are now working with relevant stakeholders to provide an alternative solution. I do have faith that we will be informed of what that conversation is. Um, also for the Block 5 landscaping of McLennan Street, Maroopna, it is no longer proceeding also because submissions received exceeded the allocated budget, but council is proposing to rescope these works and deliver in a future year for your information. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any more councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Closing comments, <gasps> Councillor Summer. Ah, oh, just no. Thank you. Now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page thirty-six of the agenda item twelve point one one, which is skate park audit. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a council put that forward as a motion? Councillor Latson. Thank you, Ms. Ali. I'd like to move the recommendation that the Council note the results of the audit conducted on Council-owned skate parks. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? I'll second that, Ms. Ali. Councillor Spinks. Councillor Latson, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Ms. Ali. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Thank you, I'd love to. Um, so this is in response to the uh, no notice of motion that I put forward a couple of months ago, um, asking for Sorry, a couple of months. It was in July 2022, but it, you know, time flies. Um, so that was asking for an audit of our um, history and current status of all municipal skate parks, um, all past and current community requests, either by individuals or committees, relevant to municipal skate parks, including but not limited to safety, lighting and condition, and an example of infrastructure models that support a higher level of skate park skill attainment or participation. I put that forward in response to a large number of community um, requests that came through. There was a petition in regards to skate parks. We went out to Tatura and saw that their skate park is well and truly due for an upgrade. And all of these things combined to really show that, one, the community values skate parks as an important asset, um, which I completely support. My kids and I love our skate parks. Um, and two, that they were due for a more cohesive, holistic sort of look at um, where our skate parks are at and what needs to happen with them. So the result of that is this audit um, audit that's been conducted and uh, within this report is the results of it. And I personally think it's a really great um, report that's come back. It's very clear. Uh, it has some clear, um, it clearly outlines the status of our skate parks. We have four um, skate parks across our municipality and a couple of youth spots as well. And it really shows that they are due for some love. Um, we know that the Shepparton Skate Park is, uh, has been hugely advocated to have lighting for quite a long time, um, to mixed <laughs> opinions of various um, uh, entities within that debate. Um, but I think that this audit, what it's been able to do is really shine a spotlight on how important skate parks are within, within our municipality and the fact that they have been overlooked for quite a long time. The Tatura Skate Park, uh, to me, I read from this report, is absolutely due for an upgrade, and we know this. It really didn't need a report. We know it anyway, but 
reports are important. Um, and from here, we know there is a bit of debate around Tatura, where that skate park would go. So there's work to be done. And now that we have this, I would really like to continue this momentum supporting these important community facilities um, to look at not only how we can continue to get those lights put up at the Shepparton Skate Park, um, but also how we can look at perhaps what a more advanced skate park would look like. Of course, there would be quite a large budget required attached to that, so there is a lot of work to be done. And also what needs to happen at Tatura with their skates park. Um, we often talk about the need for youth spaces and for places that community can come together to exist, and skate parks are an essential part of that. So I absolutely positively note the results of this audit. I thank Council for the work that they have done, and I look forward to using this information to then progress to what comes next. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, Mayor Sarley. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Councillor Spinks, <laughs> because, um, and I know your boys are keen skaters, uh, unlike myself, my last time I was on skates, there was a place called Skate Wave in Shepparton. So that's how long ago uh, yeah. it has been. Um, but I'm really glad to see this this audit of the of Greater Shepparton Skate Parks. Yeah. What it really did highlight to me, uh, more than anecdotally, is that the, the Tatura Skate Park particularly is in um, urgent and immediate need of a replacement or an upgrade. Um, it somewhat ties in with the, uh, the whole call for... Um, for a detailed design of Matsia Park, and I know that um, it can be a, a it can be an issue itself, with Matsia Park. But this particular issue with the, the skate park there in Tatura can be a standalone as well. It does need to be upgraded urgently. Um, but the current setup at, at the, in Tatura is dangerous, so I certainly support a course of action here. The others uh, have come across as being in good and working conditions. I see no great um, change required there. Although I don't do take into the point that. Um, uh, you don't just stay stagnant on it, you move forward with it. So, um, but well done on uh, asking for this audit. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Adam. Yes, thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, yes, yeah, thank you, Councillor Spinks, for moving this motion. I think, as you said, it's shone a spotlight on, on our facilities and our assets in respect to uh, skate parks. Um, I just note that the report also notes that uh, although they don't seem to be up to date, so to speak. They have been peri periodically um, upgraded and, and maintained to a degree, uh, but I think the conclusion from the report is actually quite quite accurate. And I'm going to bore you with reading that out. It's not too long. Shepparton's four skate parks were constructed approximately 20 years ago, and whilst well maintained, they are becoming outdated. That's been accepted. The inclusion of skating in the Commonwealth Games has no doubt led to an increased interest in the sport within the municipality. This has presumably led to an increasing request for additional maintenance and redesign of council facilities, no doubt, which is what instigated the motion in the first place. A review of the Shepparton Skate Park has revealed that whilst it contains the appropriate elements to foster the growth of the sport, its layout may need to be redesigned and updated in the future to support people wishing to pursue more competitive opportunities if council is wishing to proceed in the direction which is not ready if council is or words wishing to proceed. If there is a desire to undertake a skate park upgrade slash improvement program, financial expenditure would be required to undertake a feasibility study by an external consultant uh, as because of the reason that it's an ever-changing niche industry that requires a level of expertise beyond what is currently in council. So I think that really sums it up. We have to have a desire as a council to uh, some funds moving forward to upgrade and redesign if that's what we feel we want to do it has to be done by an external consultant because it's a field that requires a certain expertise that we don't possess and as it says this area changes all the time as Councillor Bravery said skate wave days are gone this is a new sport in, in a sense and I'm sure especially with the Commonwealth Games this will probably evolve into something even more comprehensive moving forward so uh, that's something that we should consider but we know we know where we stand now and we know what we have to do Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Thank you. I remember back when the Shepparton Skate Park was built 20 years ago and being amazed that Shepparton Council could be so forward thinking. It was an impressive addition to our Lake Vista 
and focused solely on free recreation for youth with an element of risk. It was exciting and I absolutely loved it. So wind forward to today and we have what consultants describe as a site that has regional scale and heavy use but has become dated. So I'm going to talk about lighting because a mountain of community requests clearly outline lighting as the next step. Lighting and upgrades in the city centre could attract nighttime competitions, much like half pipes do at the snowfields. It could also cultivate local champions, but to reach that level, it takes support, commitment, time, and the ability to practice at all hours. Right now, hours are limited to daylight, and the provision of youth spots, such as mentioned in the report, are totally non-comparable. We have completed pre preliminary works to install this lighting with finalisation previously planned for next financial year. But instead, we're now opting for public consultation, which will likely attract a barrage of objections. So call me a cynic, but the impression I get is that some people see the lake as their own private property and not a space to be shared. Consultation alone will likely draw lighting out until the end of next financial year where it could be at risk of being formally quashed in light of submissions. The sporting, social, tourism and economic boosts that this project would provide are unlimited. And with a proposed total revenue of $175.49 million and proposed $51.1 million in capital works for next year's council budget, it beggars belief that we can't find funds for this already committed project. This report also mentions 67% of maintenance requests at the Shepherd and Skate Park were graffiti related. So I put this to you. Instead of graffiti being a deterrent for future works and a yardstick of antisocial youth behaviour, perhaps the Shep Skate Park would be <coughs> an ideal place for condoned street art. That's the kind of subversive thinking we need to remain progressive, work with our youth, not against them lean into the challenge, not away. So I'd like to thank Councillor Spinks for shining a spotlight on this. I thought it was very interesting to read and I agree about the Tatura Escape Park also. Very good, thank you Councillor Summer. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Latson, would you like any closing comments? Yes please, Mayor Farley. I just want to echo fellow councillors' um, opinions on the skate park audit and I want to highlight the um, Councillor Summers' comments around the graffiti and uh, what were the other comments on there in the audit? Uh, yeah, just need to be taking some pride in community assets and there's so many people that use, utilise the, um, the skate park and other council facilities, so need to be, uh, if, you, if you're wanting to get improvements to things like this that, you know, it costs council money to go and clean the the facilities up to an acceptable standard and maintain them. So, you know, there's genuine appetite to get lighting on at the Shepherd and Skate Park and genuine appetite to upgrade the Tatura Skate Park to acceptable standards. So you just need to be able to find room in the budget for that to happen. So thank you, Mayor Zarling. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we go to page 41 of the agenda item 12.2, which is bike jumps update. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a councillor put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. I'll move to the council report on bike jumps. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? Councillor Latson. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? Just realised I made a mistake on moving that. Am I able to insert another word, please, Ms. Sally? Uh, I wanted to say that the council note the initial report on oh, this. What are you? Can I just? I'll just just get some clarification because you've technically already moved the motion, so, yes. and it's been seconded. As, uh, it has been seconded as well. So in the motion, yeah. What is the amendment that you would like? Amendment. If that's okay with the original mover. Thank yeah. you very much. That the council. What was that? Sorry. Note the initial report. A note the initial report on bike jumps. So the word initial to be put in between the word that and report. So, as per the governance guidelines, Councillor Summer, do you accept that? And Councillor Latson, do you also accept that as a Absolutely. seconder? No worries. Uh, please proceed. Thank you very much. Um, okay. So, thank you for this initial preliminary report. 
Um, as, uh, as an initial report, it's okay. The first third of it is a preamble of council reinforcing their position, our position on risk management and safety. And then it jumps straight into the solution of building a pump track. It's still beyond my understanding how a single pump track replaced the initial intent of zoning appropriate dirt jump friendly locations in areas already heavily used for that purpose, such as Lincoln Drive. The report speaks nothing of the community input, but does mention the location for said pump track was culturally and physically inappropriate, so it did not go ahead. So I'm, I'm going to be a bit nostalgic. So we must remember that core part of us when we were much younger, hanging out with mates while working on projects. Um, the nostalgia and value of that is enormous. Council could throw $20 million at a pump track and still not get the same value for money that as allowing people to cheaply build these jumps themselves. Outdoor activities are already in sharp decline due to the introduction of screen technology. Childhood obesity has reached epidemic proportions and more kids are experiencing mental health issues than ever before. So it's just a suggestion, but perhaps we could place a perimeter with signs saying, these are the rules, use at your own risk, all non-compliant jumps will be demolished. We use signs like that at other sporting grounds that carry an element of risk and jump friendly zones will offer a much safer solution than arbitrary demolition, which is our current practice. Demolishing jumps force people further and further into remote locations that are far more unsafe. I rue the day when someone is seriously injured and too far away for emergency services to access. Serious injuries are very rare, but they have happened before. And with a proactive can-do approach towards an agreed jump-friendly zone, these disasters could be averted. So currently, some, job, some jumps actually go over walking paths, which is clearly unsafe. Some are built too close to the riverbanks, which can cause environmental damage. And some are not built within safety specifications at all. Bulldozing jumps without an alternative totally ignores all these risks while pretending to offer protection. People will still find a way to build them, even if we don't make it safe, and the ominous outcome will be on council, whether it's legally ratified or not. Ignore that. But meanwhile, purpose-built locations such as Adelaide City Dirt Trails are, and I quote, a hub for BMX recreation that draws users from all over the country and the world. So this report is only an initial report, report and it claims that council is working with a private landowner who may be amenable to allowing dirt jumps on that land. However, I'm not holding my breath after skate park lights were put on hold and the allocated $200,000 of this year's budget for dirt jumps essentially vanished into thin air. It would only cost, according to the report, another 20,000 on top of that allocation to create something substantial. But the report indicates that this may be financially prohibitive. And to me, that makes no logical sense at all. So I hope we can grow to see the public health benefits in what's actually being proposed. And again, lean into community sentiment instead of away from it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Ludson, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Ms. Arling. Thank you, Councillor Ludson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Spinks. There's a part of me that cannot believe I am publicly speaking against this. <laughs> and I want to be deeply clear that I am supportive of what was originally trying to be achieved here. This all stemmed, and we all know it, from the bike jumps that were built by local kids in their local area that were demolished because of safety reasons during COVID, when kids were stuck at home trying to come up with activities to do and parents were probably pulling their hair out trying to get kids outdoors. So the intention to create a space where kids could replicate that um, is so noble, <coughs> so absolutely well intended. But I just, I agree with what Councillor Summer has said in that um, what this report is suggesting is not that. But what I want to argue is that it couldn't ever be that. I just don't think there is a way to 
formalise an informal activity that kids are going to want to just go within walking distance, within travel distance of their home and their mates and do whatever it is that kids do. And I'm not saying that we can, you know, condone these, this particular example of bike jumps was on land that is protected because it's within a river zone, they were unsafe, all of these things. But I think there is just an element of young people being young people that council can't ever try and replicate. It's not possible. Council itself has to be this big, formal, kind of boring institution that, you know, that's, that's the limits of council. Um, and I absolutely support, you know, in this report, it suggests that we could buy, build this BMX track. It looks real cool. I'm very supportive of this as a community infrastructure. But in terms of what it initially was trying to solve, there isn't ever going to be a way that, that works for all of these people, young people we're talking about, younger and older, families together, whatever it is. If you put it in one location, it's not going to be right for so many others. It's not going to be local to them. If you build it so that people can build their own bike jumps, who has ownership over that? You know, do the one group that come and build theirs, how are they going to then coexist with the next lot? It's kids in a, play, in a sand pit. And it, I just think that what we're trying to achieve, unfortunately, is outside of council's capacity to do, not from a lack of will or a lack of want, but from just the realities of what this organisation is. Um, in terms of delivering a BMX track for our community, sounds amazing and I look forward to those discussions. I think this report is great. But in terms of being able to deliver the fun adventure and exploration of youth, I think that just is outside of our capacity. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Adam. Yes, thank you, Mayor Sally. Um, I just want to agree with Councillor Spinks. I think the intention is great uh, in respect to built to... Uh, it goes against the grain. Uh, the attraction was the informality of these bike jumps for the kids. They want to be creative. If we get involved and we're going to try and set up some clinical uh, formal track, and the kids will most likely try and change that anyway. And once they change that, that falls outside our uh, OHS or inside our OHS responsibilities. That could cause all sorts of. I'm uh, reading the risk assessment here, uh, and yeah, I agree with it. Um, this is not what they want. Kids don't want some sort of formal, as I say, um, sanitised version of what they have in their mind. What they were doing was fantastic. We've all done that as kids. So um, yeah, I tend to agree. The report is great, highlights all that information. We still may go forward with something, but it's probably not what the, the kids were intending. Very good, thanks. Mr. Adam, yeah. as I would like to speak. <laughs> Who was that you, or do you want to speak to the motion? Uh, for, for the motion? Yeah, for the motion, fine. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, thank you. Look, um, Councillor Spinks, yes, spot on. And so, same with Councillor Adam as well. Young will be young. And I know the, the young boys, particularly who built the ones at the end of Lincoln. Uh, drive down there and um, uh, they were devastated when it was uh, demolished but understandably I understand why it was demolished as well so um, you know young will be young but then there is a protective element that needs to be coming and needs to be required here as a protectorate uh, the council has to look at the you know foreseeable and potential litigation and there are many cases of councillors against that we need a way forward. I'm not sure that this is the way forward. All we're doing is noting this particular report. Um, I think council officers have done a, a due diligence in going about and finding it, trying to find a potential suitable site, but what site will be right for the kids who just want to get on their bike and go there, as Councillor Summers, uh, sorry, Councillor Spinks pointed out. Um, a potential site was looked at in terms of council owned land. It doesn't seem to be one that, that's a suitable there. The w one that we did look at was not um, an amenable to, to, to be used. Um, and there are discussions with a local property owner. Hopefully something might come about of that and a dirt bike track can be, I don't know how you're going to be able to do it to, to manage just go in and, and start digging out um, holes and putting on. I mean, uh, if, if you've got a, if you've got a contrived, prefabricated mould for bike jumps. That that helps some people, but 
it's not what this was intended to be, unfortunately. I do hope there's a way forward, and particularly for those young boys who I know who would dearly love to have some bike track. Thank you, you Councillor Brophy. Are there any more councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Closing comments, Councillor Summer? Uh, yes, thank you. Just wanted to remind everyone, if you vote against this, you're actually voting against the report. We're not making a decision today about any budget allocation or I any think, decision on the ethics or morality or risk assessment I of think, these things. I think we're aware of that, aren't we? Yeah. Okay, well, yeah. if you want to vote against an officer's report, that is up to you. But I do want to make well, it very, me. very clear that we are not talking about one point in time during COVID when kids miraculously got the idea to get on their bikes and go out and build the jumps. This has been happening since bikes were invented, probably over a hundred years. I'd say many of us have memories of that and probably stories from our grandparents of that. And arbitrarily, councils come along and bulldoze them. I'm not saying my idea of fencing off an area is the best idea at all. I'm just saying that perhaps this conversation needs to progress. And that was the point of the community group. And unfortunately, the report doesn't actually put anything in there about what they thought, the user groups. I certainly wouldn't use them. We probably nobody around this table would use them. It's not for us. And the last thing I'd want would be a prefabricated, contrived mould for the kids to have. That is the pump track. That is not what we want. We want to have some kind of flexibility with it in terms of Councils can't do it. Councils are doing it. Um, Adelaide set up a great little bike thing. It's not quite as flexible as what I was hoping, but it's huge. It's a great tourist tra um, draw card. And a community group has now taken over and it is creating a lot of interest and in economy for their local community and beyond. So clearly, since it is already happening and, and none of the people around this table seem to understand that it's already happening and it's happening safely and it's being really well done. I have a lot of work to do in trying to ensure that every one of you understands that this is a council thing and it is doable and it is low risk and potentially could have some major positive repercussions for the youth of our region. Can I um, point a clarification? As this is the first that we're hearing about this Adelaide example, would you be able to send a link around to everybody? On that my would be council good. Facebook page as well. So oh, sent it. Thank you. That would be great. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, all good? Yeah, I've got many other examples, many other emails. Can't wait to share. Look forward to them. <laughs> Councillors, if there's nothing else, we will go to the vote. All those in favour? Carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 45 of the agenda item 13.1, which is the adoption of the amendment C242 GSHE to the Greater Shepparton Planning Scheme. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the Council note the amendment C242 GSHE to the Greater Shepparton Planning Scheme uh, received, note that uh, we received 12 submissions. Note the delegates report for amendment C242 GSHE, which outlines Council officers' responses to the concerns raised in those submissions as attached and adopt the amendment to the Greater Shepparton City Council Planning Scheme with post-exhibition changes in accordance with Section 29 of the Planning and Environment Act 1987 and submit amended C242 GSHE to the Greater Shepparton Planning Scheme to the Minister for Planning for approval in accordance with Section 31 of the Planning and Environment Act 1987. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I please have someone second that motion? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak to the motion? Yeah, I think what this, when you look at the plan, Mayor Sally, it just proves that Tatura really is an up and coming, it really is growing exponentially. It is, they always seem to be running out of land. This, this uh, uh, motion talks about 602 hectares, uh, which is included in the Tatura settlement boundary identified in the Tatura framework plan Clause 1101 stroke 1 L, and it's it's to the north and to the east of the present uh, uh, town or city, uh, soon will be a city of Tatura. <coughs> and as I say, they've been crying out for some time. This is the first step in a number of steps, but it's to get the process underway, which is going to go on over the next few years. What the amendment does, it seeks to rezone the majority of yet to be developed land within the settlement and boundary zone, far, zone, farming zone, low density residential zone and rural living zone, 
we're transferring into the urban growth zone in order to have more um, uh, have more housing available within the uh, within the area. And the land uh, is as follows: we're going to uh, rezone farming zone 506 hectares, rural living 52.53, and low density nearly 43 hectares. So what we're doing is we're quite well, it's in a planned way, we're going to ensure that the, what the amendment, what, what the motion suggests is we're going to have a planned increase in available land for residential uh, purposes in Shepparton. The economic uh, impacts are, are terrific. Uh, if there are more blocks become available, uh, the knowledge that the land is designated for future residential development, this will supply, this will uh, provide certainty for landowners within the area. So this is a natural progression, terrific stuff. Um, and I hope that uh, the, when we put the submissions in, uh, or sorry, when this goes out for public submissions, et cetera, it goes further, that uh, we get some good results out of it. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak motion? Uh, yes, just briefly. Um, just to highlight that this particular uh, planning scheme amendment or proposed amendment uh, is simply to safeguard um, and future-proof that land for future development uh, as strategic residential growth corridors. Um, a lot of the work around the timing of development, this is not a tomorrow thing, this is a well down the track, and then the work around the timing of it and what that growth is actually going to look like on the ground happens separately. As Councillor Dobson said, this is the first step of many, um, at, but what this uh, particularly important step does is allows all of the steps to come after it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Miss Sally. Yeah, look, uh, both councillors have covered it pretty well. I just want to note the actual pattern of expansion to the north, east, and southeast. To me, it's a very um, nice regular growth pattern instead of tending to go towards the Midland Highway, which you might have thought may have been the accepted sort of theory, we're going in a nice, like in, in a sense of concentric circles. So I just want to note that that's the natural progression of a, of a town uh, like Tachira, and as Councillor Dobson said, one day it'll probably become a city. So I'm just happy with the fact that it's, it's growing in all directions rather than just following down the highways as such. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Just very quickly, before I go to some closing comments, add some uh, additional thoughts around this expansion, which is really exciting, as it's been alluded to, that uh, Tacture is growing as we speak now and will continue to grow. And it's amazing this aerial shot now, what it would look like, you know, in 15 to 20 years' time, once we see some significant uh, residential growth now, which then sort of now uh, makes me focus around the existing supermarkets that have taken the initiative to grow with the city and provide and be there in the future when the expansion takes place. We do hear from uh, residents of Taxura that they are still limited with some key services, in particular banks. And I'd be looking <coughs> at forecast growth if I was the banks. I'm not going to suggest that the big four and, and others uh, aren't already looking at things, but uh, with this growth that's forecast, I'd be looking at ways to get in there and to service this uh, growing community as well, which they deserve uh, and need the key services. And I would encourage these big companies to reconsider their position and look to invest in the likes of Taxura. Closing comments, Councillor Dobson. No, I'm all done. Thank you. Very good. There's anything else? We're going to go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion carried on opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 54 of the agenda item 13.2, Kyla, Marupna, Shepparton North and Shepparton South Community Infrastructure Needs Assessment. There is a recommendation. Can I please have that put forward as a motion? Councillor Abdullah. So I'll uh, move the recommendation on page 54 as a motion that the council adopt, number one, the Kyla Community Infrastructure Needs Assessment, March 2023, as attached. The Murupna Community Infrastructure Needs Assessment, March 2023, as attached. Number three, the Shepparton North Community Infrastructure Needs Assessment, March 2023, as attached. And number four, the Shepparton South Community Infrastructure Needs Assessment, March 2023, as attached. Thank you, Councillor Adula. Can I please have a Councillor second that motion? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Thanks. Councillor Abdul, would you like to speak to the motion? 
Yes, Ms. Ali, thank you so much. Um, this is a very important piece of work that uh, Council has completed. This is about our community infrastructure needs. And as we know that uh, living in, our, uh, in this region, uh, we need community infrastructure to enhance, you know, to basically to, to serve the basic needs, but also to enhance the livability of our region and our municipality. So, um, and why do we need to in, uh, assess this uh, needs, assess, uh, needs um, infrastructure need? Because our population is growing. We have, uh, we are evolving, uh, we are in evolving space and uh, due to the increased, um, due to the growing population um, and um, and the needs of that particular population, population, um, we need to uh, regularly assess the community infrastructure. So in this round, Council uh, undertook a quantitative and qualitative analysis of existing and planned uh, community infrastructure within Greater Shepherd and City Council in um, in four areas, one was um, Kayala, Marukna, Shepparton North, and Shepparton South. And uh, the report presents all the um, all the community community infrastructure that have been identified. And there's a range of community community infrastructure um, uh, that that we have in our region and in in every uh, region. So we are talking about libraries. We are talking about early years uh, child services we are talking about youth centers or or additional or active recre recreational spaces so there's a whole range of community infrastructure that uh, we need in these um, areas that have been identified um sorry the uh, yeah so these four uh, in these four areas um there's a whole list of uh, infrastructure requirements that have uh, come up uh, as a part of this study and i'm very um and it's very interesting to see um, these um, infrastructure um, that have been highlighted. Um, you know, we have got kindergarten, we've got, um, we've got um, all the uh, senior size soccer fields um, as well have been highlighted. So my main point is that, yes, we have highlighted the, the, the infrastructure that is needed. Uh, but not all of this is the responsibility of council to deliver. Um, there are some that are that are um, that are the responsibility of state government, and there are some that the federal government has to uh, provide. But yes, there are many which council is also supposed to provide, and uh, and most of them can be delivered through through the de developers' contribution, which is a fantastic way of making sure that developers are actually giving back to in terms of uh, enhancing our community infrastructure. So I would um, encourage everyone to go through this report and see what, uh, what has been identified as the future community infrastructure need. And uh, yes, the future budgeting process is going to take care of some of these assets. And for others, we will be advocating um, strongly um, to state and federal government. Thank you, Councillor Abdul. Councillor Spinks, would you like to speak to the motion? Yes, I would. And I apologise in advance because I'm probably going to go over what uh, Councillor Abdul said just because it's how it makes sense in my head. Um, but these are um, what I first want to highlight is that the term community infrastructure was robustly and enthusiastically <coughs> uh, discussed around the table when we were first shown um, information around these reports. Uh, because honestly, community infrastructure is a very wide term that we all have different um, considerations of what that does mean. Um, but so the, these reports have really had to, I guess, draw a line around what does uh, is considered community infrastructure in the terms of this sort of report. And it considers things such as early years, child services and youth, education facilities, um, libraries, age and disability services, active recreational facilities. And as mentioned, some of these are within the council's responsibilities and some of these are absolutely not. But the work um, or the purpose of the work that's been completed is that high level strategic planning. It's the kind of work that um, can only sort of is a little bit visionary and sort of says, if this is how it was to develop, we would love for it to look this way and we're going to do the work to try and make that happen. Um, and a whole bunch of things have to fall into place for that vision to come to life. But the opposite of that is that if this work wasn't done, all of the structure plans would happen independently. And there is great risk that these community infrastructures 
um, that are essential to healthy, happy communities may be missed along the way. So it is essential that this work gets done so that we have these sort of um, facilities and infrastructure front of mind with every bit of planning work that we do after it. So every um, structure plan, community plan um, has this work done. This is long range. The um, the growth that some of our areas, Kayala and Marupna and Shep South and Shep North, the growth that they are going to see over the next bunch of years is pretty extraordinary. And we need to make sure that all of those new com community members have access to these things as well. So um, these reports, while they may seem quite ambitious, and in some ways they are, and they need a lot of things to fall into place for it to come true, this work is what starts that process. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. Uh, thank you, Mayor Sali. Yes, look, this is really forward planning and it's it's terrific. It's it's basically a, a helicopter vision of seeing what is and what is still needed. Um, it really does tie in all the other plans and structures that the council already have in place. Um, and and it really does look at what the infrastructure needs for that particular community in these particular areas as the growth areas do expand, and we know that they are. There are some elements that still need adjusting as we go or additional con consideration as we move forward, particularly with population growth, service growth, and therefore what we have here, community infrastructural growth. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Ms. Harley. Yeah, I just want to uh, reiterate uh, the other council's comments and uh, how important this document is actually. A base for future advocacy by council to the local government and feds, depending on what the project is, and also provide some sort of stable vision for uh, private developers who want to fall plan and uh, expect to housing developments and that. So I think it's great, it's needed. As Councillor Brophy said, we may need some recalibration moving forward. However, it's, it's a great forward thinking plan that everyone can uh, dip into when they, they make their plans either for private development or, as I say, for council advocacy for funding. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Any other council? Thank you, Mayor Sally. Can I, I just uh, implore the people from Kyala Marutna, Shepherd <coughs> and Shep South to have a look at these uh, reports because. For example, the Kyala one is 49 pages, Maroopna is 45, Shep North 54 and Shep South 61. So there's all sorts of information there that that's not really pertains to me or perhaps any of us, but to the residents of these particular areas, we've been thinking about the whole, everyone in, this, in that area and how it's going to grow. So it's a, this is probably one of the most important documents that we've had going around for quite some time. It talks about the future, perhaps over the next 20 or 30 years, what Shepparton may look like, what we need to put in there. As Councillor Abdullah has highlighted, there are certain st things that need like education and childcare, et cetera, et cetera. So these, the, this, these four documents are very important. So I just ask that the community uh, to get on our website and have a look at them. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Latson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Just, uh... I want to add that outside of the Kyla Marutna, Shep North and Shep South community infrastructure needs, there was discussion and there's future plans to uh, include and incorporate other townships in Greater Shepparton. So it wasn't just those four select, but this report just targets those four. But look forward to future reports. Thank you. Thanks, Councillor Latson. Uh, closing comments, Councillor Abdul? Oh, Councillor Summer, sorry, is there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? I thought we were done. Thank you, Mayor Sally, better if it's the only one who hasn't. Uh, very lofty ambitions, and I think it's pretty good. Uh, obviously, they're not funded or um, planned in the very near future, but it's always great to plan in advance. They could um, help dictate what we put to government in our asks of government. Uh, I'd love uh, Marupna to achieve what they needed, which is upgraded library, rec reserve and pool. Great to see so many youth childcare centres in there, so we're not in danger of having a super primary school anytime soon. Thank you, Councillor Summer. <laughs> I think enough's been said, so I don't probably need to say anything else. So I'll go to closing comments. Thanks for Closing comments. That's Abdullah, no. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Councillors, we're to page 62 of the agenda, item 14.1, which is 
designation of confidentiality of information reports. The following report and attachments have been designated confidential by the Chief Executive Officer under Governance Rule 107 and in accordance with the definition of confidential information in the Local Government Act 2020. The Act, item 14.3, Greater Shepparton Cultural Heritage Awards 2023. These documents contain information which is consistent with the Local Government Act 2020 definition of council business information, being information that would prejudice the council's position in commercial negotiations if prematurely released. Item 14.2, which is closed meeting to members of the councillors. There is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Yes, Sally, I'll move the recommendation that pursuant to section 66.1 of the Local Government Act 2020 resolved that the council meeting be closed to members of the public for consideration of the following confidential item. Item 14.3, Greater Shepparton and Cultural Heritage Awards 2023. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Can I please have a councillor second that motion? I'll second that motion. Thank you. Yeah. Councillors, all in favour? Motion carried. We will now close the meeting. Welcome back. Item 15, documents for sign-in and sealing. They'll receive item 16, councillor reports, which is 16.1.1, councillor activities, March 2023. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have one that forward as a motion? 
Ms Ali, I'll move the, uh, move the motion that the Council receive and note the summary of the Councillors' community interactions and informal meetings of Councillors. Thank you, Councillor Swinks. Can I have a Councillor second that motion, please? All right, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Ms Ali. Swinks, would you like to speak to the motion? So often we use this time to congratulate ourselves on how many things we get to, um, but I can't help reflect on what it would be like if there was nothing on this list. I think this is just how this list should look. We've been in the role long enough now that I think this is just how it should look. This is a good, healthy list um, and a reflection of the incredible work that our community gets up to out there, and we just happen to be lucky enough to get invited to. So pat ourselves on the back once again, <laughs> I guess is where I ended. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Adam, would you like to speak to the motion? I really can't expand on that. Councillor Adam, are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Watson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I just want to go through this extensive list one by one, just to um, appreciate uh, the role of the privileged role of councillors. You do only have six minutes, I'll remind you. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Sally. Uh, we'll kick it off from the uh, Fairly Leadership Program. Shepherd and South Community Centre open day and launch of the Heart and Soul book, which is available to purchase. I believe Jeff Dob uh, Councillor Dobson purchased one, along with Councillor Adler. Um, Golden Valley Grammar School, dollars and cents, year nine students are being busy. Shepherd and Education Plan Advisory Board meeting. Greater Shepherd and Youth Leading the World Congress, where our CEO spoke very passionately about environmental issues. Uh, Greater Shepherd and LGBTQIA plus advisory meeting, TAT Park advisory committee meeting, heritage advisory committee meeting that I'm uh, now on the heritage advisory committee and enjoy that role. Uh, Regional Cities Victoria, Property Council, Geelong Outlook 2023, launch climate emergency action, action plan, launch Greater Shepherd and Lighthouse project known as Ollie, opportunity and lifelings for youth. Uh, I was at the opening for that and uh, want to shine a light on the positive work there that uh, get down there. If you're, you know, they have uh, an open kitchen, I guess, so if you're during their opening hours, just go down in there and have a feed for the young people. Commonwealth Games Australia, Regional Familiarisation Tour in Shepparton, Greater Shepparton City Council, International Women's Day, Sir Optimus International of Shepparton, International Women's Day celebration. Do to Gala, Harmony Village, Aged Care Services and Retirement Living, shout out there. Disability Advisory Committee meeting, Positive Aging Advisory Committee meeting, the launch of the Australian Jordanian, Jordanian, yeah, Jordanian. sorry, my apologies, Jordanian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Admona Resource Recovery Centre, Curbside Waste Inspection. Turn to page, councillors, please turn to page 64 of the agenda. Halfway, if you're not. Cricket Shepparton presentation night. That was uh, well well done there. Congratulations to all the winners of the Cricket Association season. Great Shepparton City Council citizenship ceremony. Recycling Victoria, regional visit, Golden Valley. Converge on the Goldwyn Festival. Hustlin Auto Show, Tatura, 13th birthday, car show. Happy birthday, Hustlin. The George Nelson Shepherd and Gift 2023, Shepherd and Albanian Muslim Society Harvest Festival, Committee for Greater Shepherd and Annual General Meeting, All Saints Anglican School, Sod Turning, Photo Opportunity for our Mayor of Acknowledgement of Ramadan, Lunch with Cultural Leaders. Um, you don't want to add on to that, that one anymore? No, this is your show, go for it. <laughs> um, 2023 GV Harmony Cup, All Abilities Cricket. I uh, know Bernie Rose students were down there teeing off and they enjoyed play all. And there were some schools travel from Bendigo and Echuca, so it's great that they come to Deakin and tee off there. Uh, launch Friends of the Australian Botanical Gardens of Shepparton, Sign of the Times. Sales Guard <laughs> Advisory Committee meeting, Commonwealth Games 2026, Organising Committee, Regional Engagement Forum, Harmony Week, Grand Vale Primary School, Welcome event, Country Fire Authority and Volunteer Fire Brigades Victoria. State Firefighter Championship 2023. Shepherd and Greyhound Racing Club, CKH Painting Shepherd and Cup 2023. Albanian Ramadan Interfaith, is it pronounced Iftar? Dinner? Yes. Breaking the Fast Together. Mm -hmm. 
Soccer event, GB Sons and Bo Morris FC. Eat up 10 year sandwich making event. Shout out to the great work Lynn and Galea does there. Happy birthday, Eat up. Uh, development hearing panel, Optus Business Plus Roadshow Shepparton. Fairly Leadership Program Cultural Training. Baka Huli Foundation, Ramadan Iftar Dinner. Shout out to Richmond Fo Football Club. Okay. Greater Shepparton City Council Citizenship Ceremony. Launch River Connect Strategic Plan 2023-2028. And believe it or not, finally, Public Sector Gender Equity Commissioner. Uh, Equality Commissioner, my apologies. Um, <laughs> in addition to that, just for council elections next year, if you're interested in any of those things, just put your name down for and apply for council next year. Very good, Councillor Sarek. You should do that every month. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Sarek. Very nice, that's great. Councillors, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Time. No, no, could council let to go over that again? That in under six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you elaborate. You know I would if there was no permits. We're going to straighten up a bit. Um, councillors, if there's nothing else, we'll go to the vote. All those in favour? Motion opposed. Councillors, we now go to page 66 of the agenda, which is item 16.2, Council Committee reports nil received. Uh, over the pages of 67, and it's item 17.1, which is notice of motion for slash 2023 Avenue of Flags. There is a recommendation. Can I please have a council put that forward as a motion? Thank you, Mayor Sally. I'll move that the council one provide a report to seek the endorsement of the recognition by way of an Avenue of Flags in an appropriate location within the municipality. The report should include the financial implications together, together with a plan to seek assistance from embassies representing the nominated Victorian <coughs> multicultural agencies, indigenous agencies, the Victorian state government and the federal government and the report be placed before council on or before the September 2023 scheduled council meeting. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Can I have a councillor second that motion, please? I'll second that motion, Mayor Sally. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Mayor Sally, could I move an amendment, please, if that's um, acceptable by the mover of the motion and the seconder, please? Like I suppose you want to hear it first. That'd be yes. Thank you. Um, I'd like to change the wording on point one. As it stands, it says provide a report to seek the endorsement, uh, that that recognition by way of, I'd like to change it to provide a report to seek the endorsement of the uh, Indigenous migrant and refugee communities by way of an avenue of flags that appropriate. So I want to insert the words, um, where are we? So you're changing point one. Changing point one. And what will point one, if you just want to read it out in the top. Read out the new. Uh, yeah, point one. Provide a report in the of the recognition of Indigenous migrant and refugee communities by way of an avenue of flags in an appropriate location within the municipality. I hope I got that right. Uh, Councillors should all have a copy of that in front of them. Uh, the mover and the seconder, Councillor Dobson, do you accept that? And Councillor Brophy? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yes, yes, I do. And uh, thank you for that clarification. See that. It now becomes the motion. Councillor Dobson, would you like to speak? Yeah, thank you. Just briefly. Um, I think it's, it's important that Greater Shepparton City, City Council recognises and acknowledges Indigenous, migrant and refugee communities who have all contributed to the growth of the Goulburn Valley. In particular, Council should note that the cultural, economic and social and religious influence, influences that they have contributed towards the growth of our region. And I'm now suggesting that Council should consider that this recognition be acknowledged in a formal matter, manner and that is by way of an avenue of flags. I don't want to get into specifics at this point where that avenue of flags may be, because that will come up in the report, no doubt, as to the cost. Um, Greater Shepparton City Council, Greater Shepparton itself, the municipality, has certainly benefited by migration. Uh, we have different and differing communities, but we don't have a commonality. So I believe that by having an avenue of flags, that that will show a commonality uh, throughout the whole community. Um, I don't see it as a one-year program um, uh, costing a lot of money at one stage. I see it as perhaps a five-year program, uh, 10 flags per year. I see, I see uh, that we should be seeking uh, ambassador assistance in the cost. I don't think that it's our role to, at this stage, to be looking at 
the cost of flagpoles, probably two or three thousand per flagpole bowls, and there may be 50 of those, might be 100 of them. We don't know yet because we haven't had a report come in. But I, I would see that we seek embassy assistance in, in the cost. I also see celebrations and flag raising by officials, and I see a strong tourist outcome, and I also see a community embracing each, uh, each other and offering solidarity to each other underneath the avenue of flags. I see community members from outside Greater Shepparton coming to witness a unique and strong community spirit. And it's, it is a unique and strong community spirit that I think would come from, um, from, from this project. Um, you know, it, it's often said that Indigenous people, when they see uh, the Indigenous flag flying, it means welcome to a community or to an event. And I think in much the same way, I think people coming into Shepparton from Albania or Iran, it doesn't matter where they come from, that they see their flag and they say, well, we are welcome in this particular neck of the woods. And so um, where it would be affected, I don't know. I have some ideas on that, but I don't want it to get bogged down in this stage as to uh, specifics in relation to, um, uh, to location. So I ask you, uh, my fellow councillors, if you endorse this uh, recommendation. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillor Brophy, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, thank you, Mayor Sally, and congratulations, Councillor Dobson, in putting this notice of motion forward. Um, and all you are asking at this point in time is just for a report and a feedback on what it may, may look like, what it may cost, et cetera. Um, wh when it was per first put up, all I could think of was Cooma in New South Wales. And they established back in 1959, on the 10th anniversary of the commencement of, of the Snowy Scheme, a number of flags there. And initially there was 28 flags or 28 nations which made up uh, that came along to to Cooma and to the region to to help with the Snowy Scheme. Um, on the 50th anniversary in, 1950, in 1999, from recollection, um, they put another additional 12 flags that. Um, uh, put it there. So all up, they've they've got you know uh, forty flags uh, listed along there, and it is a, a tourist mecca in terms of people going across there and seeing it and um, wanting to go there. And it it, it made Cooma very iconic in that way. As alluded to, Shepparton has the the highest multicultural uh, in city in, in regional Victoria, if not in Australia, combined with the highest Indigenous population outside Metro Melbourne in Victoria. What a unique situation that we have here. And I could just visualise coming in and seeing the First Nations flags and the current Australian flags proudly flying at the forefront of this avenue of honour uh, of flags. If you if you hark back to the International Village uh, when Shepherd was uh, was set up, you know, going back you know 40, 50 years ago, uh, and so many nations contributed to the, that early success in that. Um, if the if the report that Councillor Dobson asks for uh, presents a way forward. I can see that, that many of the other nations would be proudly that, that have got local content here, um, would have their consular representatives descending on Greater Shepparton to present the national flags and their support. So uh, well done, Councillor Dobson. And as they say, <coughs> let's fly the flag up the flagpole and see how we go. <laughs> Very good, Councillor Brophy. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Are there any? Councillor Spinks? against. I'm supportive of it, but I have spoken with Councillor Dobson about this before. Um, I do have a bit of a bugbear when it comes to flags. Um, there is notably one flag that is not flying and has been inc incredibly difficult to get flying over the last couple of years. So I'm very interested, especially noting that the purpose of this is to make people feel seen and welcome and included. And I think that there is, again, notably um, one flag that does that and as is as equally important and struggles to get to this conversation. Um, so I just want to note, um, I guess, a, a, a side interest in seeing what this report is going to bring out and how easy it is to fly flags and, and the costing around it. I, I think there's more to be learnt from this particular report um, than just what you're um, uh, proposing. Um, so that just as a side note to be put on the table. But I also just want to put out, I think it's interesting when you first mentioned uh, that this was coming to council, I had an idea of what I thought it was going to look like. Now hearing you talk about it, it's changed quite a bit in my mind. So I'm very interested to see again, um, again to see in this report what this does look like. Is this about 
um, a flag for all of the countries that are represented in our community. We are a city of the world, really, um, which could be such an incredible thing uh, to reflect our community in such a visible way. So I think overwhelmingly I'm supportive of this. I think the report's going to be wonderful and I can't wait to see what comes back in it. But personally, I could not let it slip past without just pointing out that one little detail. Thank you. Thanks. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Thank you, Mayor Sally. I think it's a great initiative and I commend Councillor Dobson for this, for this idea. Look, this, there's been different versions of this type of exhibition, I suppose, over many years. There was one, I can't recall the name, about poles coming out of the ground and they were directly connecting with the country on the other side of the world. Mm. Um, I forget what it was called, but that sounded great. Um, and obviously the International Village, which was uh, Councillor Brophy referred to, that was also a great initiative. However, I think it was cost prohibitive at the time and probably still is today. This is why this idea is quite simple in its setup in the sense it's a pole and a flag, but if we get the uh, endorsement of the actual uh, embassies of these company, uh, countries that exist in Australia, I think that gives it a lot more credibility. As Councillor Dobson said, there could be opening ceremonies. Um, it would also encourage a lot of these uh, embassies that are scattered throughout Australia, well, in Canberra, sorry, or different countries, to visit Shepparton. And a lot of them have never visited Shepparton, these ambassadors, which also creates the opportunity for um, business links and uh, with our Chamber of Commerce and with our uh, area. We were a great uh, agricultural area, obviously. I noted a few months ago when I first came back onto Council, I filled in one day, I think, for you, Mayor Sally, with the new uh, Consul General from Italy visited. Fantastic person, very impressive, very keen to initiate some sort of a, a, a trade with Greater Shepparton. So all these opportunities, I would think, would be actually embellished by something like this. So I fully support it. I don't know what it's going to look like or where it's going to be, but I'm sure we'll work out a, a plan that will be uh, acceptable to, to all. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Adam. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Latson. Thank you, Mayor Sally. I want to commend Councillor Dobson on his notice of motion. I just want to point out that on the flyer agenda, it says that it's note two when it should be note one. Thank you, Mayor Sally. Thank you. Uh, are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Abdullah. Thank you. Yeah, I just quickly want to say that, yes, it's. Um, so, Councillor Dobson, um, congratulations on bringing this uh, um, notice of motion, and I will be interested to see the report um, because, again, you know, this is something that I can personally relate to, uh, coming from a, you know, from from a different uh, country. Yes, the, it kind of. Uh, brings that sense of pride when you see something about your country of origin. So yes, the, and it, it, it definitely gives that feeling of being uh, welcome and, and this community to be so inclusive. So all those plus points are there. Uh, however, I just want to say that I also um, endorse the comments made by Councillor Spinks. That, um, you know, in the midst of all these flags, we are still missing one flag, and the discussion on including um, around including that particular flag has been very difficult. And a long process was uh, decided that you know it has to go through these 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 steps, and perhaps coming back through the advisory committee. Um, so yes, it's uh, it's um, it's for me it's like some food for thought. That why is it that one flag is so difficult to make it to this decision making table, whereas all the other flags are happily endorsed or being endorsed. Um, not saying, not undermining the significance of this particular uh, report, uh, but I'll, I will be um, keeping my eyes and ears open for that particular flag. Thank you. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Mm -hmm. Councillor Summer. Thank you. Uh, I also commend Councillor Dobson on his intentions, but. I'm finding it very difficult to justify in my, in my head. Um, the idea, it didn't come out of community consultation. It's uncosted in the budget. Um, there's been so much discussion about the community reeling from potential rate rises, budget cuts, increased cost of living, and then we've got this idea. So already Greater Shepparton is heavily active in the multicultural space and we have an established reputation already for being a welcoming city for all. 
So whilst I personally would love to embrace the welcoming avenue of flags, I think that's fantastic, but flags are not cheap. And where do we stop? There's 193 national flags in the world and it would be very difficult to defend not including certain flags once we begin. Um, in principle, I'd be happy to see the report on the possibility of these flags, but uh, sometimes these, these thought bubbles can grow legs and I don't believe that it will be properly thought, thought through to the end in a single report. So, I mean, if there's community will, we'll see a groundswell of support during the budget consultation. That, that would be great. I would, I would absolutely change my mind if I saw at least five to 10 people who wanted them, great. But um, until then, we probably should hasten slowly because we just don't have the money to be funding nice to haves. If anything, what has come from the community as stipulated by, stipulated by Councillor Sphinx and Councillor Abdullah is that we need a rainbow flag above all other flags. And that's what I wanna say. Thank you. Councillor Summer, uh, I think I'm on the other, on the other councillor. So before I go back to Councillor Dobson for closing comments, I think the intent's really good. I like it. Uh, these are things you flesh out at briefing sessions and once the report comes through, um, I can acknowledge that Councillor Dobson isn't trying to achieve this overnight, but uh, any form of recognition that we can give to our different uh, multicultural communities is needed to uh, tabled and, and that's all that's been really done at this particular point. I think sufficient time has been given to have that report come back and We'll consider all things and, and go from there. So, closing comments, Councillor Dobson. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Sally. Look, um, uh, I've put in a very broad approach to this notice of motion. I'm not seeking specifics. I'm see it's more of an idea, um, and um, I'll be asking councillors and council officers to uh, put forward any any ideas. I'm I'm just there putting them the thought in, and uh, certainly not a thought bubble, because I've been looking to do this for quite some time. Uh, in terms of, <coughs> I'm, uh, I'm not looking at a costing to the council, a, a, a burden on the ratepayers per se, other than, you know, there might be minimal amounts of money. But m my thoughts would be that if you put, if, if we agree to this idea, we put it to various embassies throughout Australia, uh, I'm sure that there'd be enough uh, embassies who would wholeheartedly uh, uh, want to uh, endorse this idea. And I think the more embassies that come on board, then it may encourage others to come on, uh, on board as well. No cost to council at this stage, except uh, the time to write a report. And I'd be very happy to uh, partake in that if, uh, if that's the way it's going to be. But I appreciate the support so far from council. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Dobson. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Against? Motion carried. Councillors, we go to page 68 of the agenda, item 17.2, which is notice of motion 5 slash 2023 CEO remuneration. Councillors, there is a recommendation. Can I please have someone put that forward as a motion? Councillor Summer. Thank you. I'll move that the council prepare an officer report that outlines the risks and benefits of reviewing the chief executive officer remuneration policy with a view of disbanding the CEO remuneration committee and identifies alternative means of assessing the performance of the CEO, including options for full councillor involvement during all considerations and the omission of external representation. Thank you. So, Ms. Sally, before uh, you go on, I have checked uh, my conflict of interest in relation to this. I, I don't have a conflict, but uh, as I didn't write the report, and I'm obviously not making a decision on it, but for transparency reasons, I might. Um, I think I'm going to decide to leave the room for the moment. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Peter. Councillors, can I please have someone second that motion? Councillors, I need a second. Uh, Councillor Letson. Councillor Summer, would you like to speak to the motion? I, yes, thank you. I won't speak for long. Um, it is what it is. There are nine of us and one CEO. We have one job under the Act, which is to employ the CEO. He is our only employee. And surely this can be achieved as a collective like it was done in the past. We attempted a new process for the CEO review suggested by the organisation, and that included limiting councillor involvement and having two external people, one with voting rights, uh, and they have very limited experience in our council. Some, some might even say, 
Some might, but the decks are stacked. That's not what I'm saying, but they might say that. And my opinion hasn't changed since this idea was first floated. But um, how everyone votes is up to you. You've all had a chance to try it this way. And if you feel there's a better approach, um, that can be explored following presentation of this report. I'm just giving you an opportunity to bow out of that process if you want to. So thank you for your time and consideration <coughs> of the matter. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillor Latson, would you like to speak to the motion? No, thank you, Ms. Ali. Thank you, Councillor Latson. Are there any councillors that would like to speak against the motion? Councillor Spinks. Not in a negative way. I respect what you've, the space that you've created for us to discuss this. When we chose to go down this path, it was with the view that we'd see if it worked for us. So now we have that opportunity and hearing you say that sort of cleared up why that's here for us and I appreciate that. Um, I do feel that it's working. For, personally, I feel that it's working. Um, certainly the committee part of it uh, being a basically a smaller number of the nine. There's four of the nine that spend a couple of hours each um, six months just collating the nine's thoughts on the matter. Um, and then we bring that back to the nine so that they can again discuss it and come up with the final decision. So really I see it as just an administrative process. It's not ever intended and I, when we put it in originally, I spoke clearly to say that if it ever became a process where the, it genuinely was excluding any councillors, I'd be against it completely. But um, I don't feel, that, and I've certainly tried my best as a part of that committee to make sure that it isn't that, and I don't feel that it is that. Um, so I'm comfortable with it continuing. Uh, it's really just, a, a in, it, for me, it's just a matter of streamlining the middle process, and it's never meant to cut out the first part of it or the end part of it. Um, the nine should be, and always should be, included in that part, and they are. So I'm comfortable with how it is. Thank you, Councillor Spinks. Are there any councillors that would like to speak for the motion? Councillor Brophy. Thank you, the Mayor Sarley. Um, look, I'd like to, it's, it's funny how I speak for this motion because um, I'm actually on the aforementioned CEO Remuneration Committee. Um, but I do support Councillor Summers' notice of motion. Again, it's just to prepare a report regarding the risks and the benefits and uh, possible outcomes and perhaps um, different options that we might have. Um, I, th I personally think it works well. Um, its intent was to streamline, as uh, Councillor Spinks pointed out, streamline the process, um, which I believe is a bit too drawn out. Um, but by having a subcommittee, instead of all councillors being involved in every little aspect of the administrative side of things, um, I guess it's a matter of trust. And if a councillor or councillors um, who are maybe not on that subcommittee feel that they are not adequately informed um, or their views are expressed in a way um, they may not trust the, the current setup. Um, I can understand that, but um, I think it works pretty well. Um, I may not agree with uh, the its intent of this particular motion, but I do support Councillor Summers' notice of motion in putting it forward. Thank you, Councillor Brophy. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Councillor Adam. Thank you, Mr. Sally. Uh, again, a bit like Councillor Spinks, I'm not really speaking against it. Again, it's only to prepare a report. However, I just feel sometimes we're wasting resources on this. Um, the two major roles of that committee is really to uh, collate, as Councillor Speaks said, the information from the other five and their own thoughts, and also make a decision on the remuneration of the um, CEO. Again, that gets discussed by all nine councillors, as, as we I think we had that conversation today in briefings. Everyone gets to put their input in. It's just these four get to do the mechanics of, of uh, conversing with the facilitator and then passing on the thoughts via the mayor to the CEO. So I don't think the other councils are out of this process in any way at all. In fact, it just saves them attending a meeting with nine people instead of four, basically. Conversations we have with these committees, no way out or unbalance the conversation towards our, our resolutions in respect to this matter. So. Yeah, I just don't, I think it's just a bit of a waste. I don't, no real harm, I suppose, but I don't know how many how many resources we're going to put towards coming up with a report about the pros and cons. I reckon I could write a report in about one paragraph. Exactly. Honestly. I could. Heavy resources. I'm not a, uh, yeah. Thank you, Councillor Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? 
Can, I'll speak uh, against the motion. Yeah, I can speak against the motion. No worries, Councillor. Yeah. Well. Uh, yes, I'll speak against the motion because I do not support that we disband the CEO remuneration committee. Uh, we have, uh, and as others have said, Councillor um, Spinks and um, Adam has said that you know the outlining the risks and benefits. We've already seen it working. We in my previous term and in, initially in this term as well. We had, uh, we had another system, we had another process where everybody, all nine councillors were, uh, were, were doing it. Uh, but then um, there was this recommendation and uh, at that time when we made the decision, as far as I'm concerned, I had carefully analyzed it. It's a best practice approach. It is something that most of the boards are following. Um, and myself, any board that I've been involved in, I've been, I've, um, I've been a part of. Um, this is the subcommittee that was um, formed to review, um, to, to deal with the CEO remuneration matters and employment matters. So it's not something that only this council has started following. So it is a best practice approach. It's a very efficient approach because it doesn't require all nine, nine councillors to be there at the same time. Um, and it's, it's a lot of uh, sort of uh, coordination work if we are asking all nine councillors to be there at the same time and discuss it. And as others, as others have pointed out, this process, this committee is not uh, excluding uh, feedback of councillors, of all councillors. It takes into account everybody's feedback and this is rather an administrative way of doing things in a most efficient manner. So on these grounds of being a best practice approach and being a more efficient um, approach, I uh, do not feel that we um, need to prepare another officer report. And also um, the presence of an external representation, an independent person, uh, an independent um, uh, member, it sort of enhances our support, our <coughs> the transparency, and the objective, objectiveness of the process. So it kind of uh, gives a good balance. So that is another reassuring factor for which I support this subcommittee. And uh, again, to say that, you know, it's we are just asking for an officer report. Um, <coughs> be careful that when we are asking for an officer report, it, it doesn't just happen. Even a small report takes officers time and effort, which otherwise can be spent wisely in other, you know, in other uh, tasks. So we have to be very careful about um, this uh, this mindset that oh, we are not making a decision. We're just asking a report. Even if you are asking a report, it ask, it is taking uh, somebody's um, time and it is using council's resources. So on those bases, I um, do not support this notice of motion. Thank you, Councillor Abdullah. Are there any other councillors that would like to speak to the motion? Uh, I'll just add some comments because obviously I'm involved in that uh, committee. I mean, look, it's pretty, um, in some ways I actually do support it, Councillor Summer, on the basis of what you're asking for, which is prepare an officer report. And I'm not dismissing what Councillor Abdullah said, that that takes time and and how long you expect uh, to give officers to get this back to us. Uh, I'm really comfortable with the process that we're currently involved in. I haven't been through the process that was undertaken uh, before my time. Uh, I would like to think that the the committee are really open and transparent and offer all councillors opportunity and as Councillor Adam alluded to, we, we've gone through a process today around that. I think if I look at it from our perspective and what I deal with uh, going through this step, having the independent member uh, facilitate this, uh, the facilitator, uh, there's numerous emails that go back and forth. Uh, I would hate to put that task on someone internally and that would be heavily conflicted in my opinion as well. Uh, you then offer an independent person to sit around the table on the presumption that, you know, it, it helps uh, manage our opinions of not, not being too far left or right and, and ensuring that we, we try and remain as neutral as we possibly can under the assessment of our CEO and, and, you know, we can get caught up in what we're doing on a daily basis and who we're uh, tasked to employ. So. I, I understand what you what you want to do, and I, and I in some ways am going to support it because okay, let's flesh it out. Uh, I got clarification today through the act that, and I apologise because the CEO is not here, but we we did that we can choose to have an external, isn't that right? We're not um, obligated by the act, so I think as councillors, uh, a report will come back at some point. Uh, we'll discuss that at a briefing, and uh, if anything, uh, if there's not an appetite to go any further, or it goes to an OCM and. If we are adamant that nothing can be produced to, to suggest that what we're currently doing isn't 
right, then uh, you know we'll continue on as it is because uh, I'm reasonably comfortable with the process. But uh, for the sake of a report, which is something that we often do support, uh, I'll, I'll support this motion for those reasons. Uh, closing comments, Councillor Summer. Uh, yeah, um, just okay. A little bit off track. Look, thank you all for that robust debate. I actually really liked the fact that we spoke about it, and I don't agree with everything that was said, obviously, but I respect your opinions. Just um, taking note, though, asking for a report. Initially, this was not asking for a report. Initially, this was let's disband that committee and, and hash it out. Now, our governance rules are so ridiculous that we always have to ask for a report. Now, if we feel like that is too resource intensive or um, takes too much time, then perhaps that should be struck out of our governance rules and we need to have another review because we have no other recourse than to ask for a report. So let's just get that loud and clear. Um, but it is what it is. I'm happy with the decision. I'll move on. You can all have your committee grace and say la vie. Fabulous. Thank you, Councillor Summer. Councillors, we will now go to the vote. All those in favour? Yes. All right. All those in favour? Against? Uh, <laughs> 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 so, so obviously I'll maintain my consistent approach. I've been in favour, so I'll support that motion. Uh, motion carried. Or do we have to vote again if it's, it's... No, because I've got to consider my casting vote, which is uh, what I've done. I'm going to not vote for it just so, because it just seems... Well, I'll call division and then you can not vote. Okay. Or I can not vote. Councillor Ladson is called division. All those councillors in favour? Councillor Brophy, Councillor Sarley, <laughs> Councillor Summer, Councillors against, Councillor Ladson, Councillor Spinks, Councillor Adam, Councillor Robson, Councillor Abdullah, motion lost. Okay. Councillors, we now go to page 69 of the agenda, item 18, urgent business not included on the... Oh, actually, we'll ask, wait for our CEO to get back in, sorry, yeah. Yep. Don't bring a can with hmm? oh. I don't like asking for reports. <sighs> I did, and they said I couldn't do it because of our governance rules. Councillors, page 69 of the agenda, item 18, urgent business not included on the agenda. Councillors, is there any urgent business arising since the last agenda? No. Item 19, close of meeting. So we'll do now at 5.01 p.m. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Very good.